Welcome to End Time Talk Radio, where the truth is usually stranger than fiction. The purpose of these shows are not to scare you, but to prepare you, because what you don't know could hurt you. The word says in Hosea 4.6, My people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. Thank you for joining us. My name is Julie, and here is the host of the show, Barry Meyer. Today on End Time Talk Radio, we have a great guest. This is a guest that my wife and I, we listen to every single morning. Um, he's been a, a minister to us every morning on the radio. And so I really want you to listen to his heart. And I really highly encourage that even if you don't listen to me anymore, because you've found that he is such a great blessing in your life, that's fine with me because it's not about us, but it's about Jesus Christ. And so I really want to honor this man. Um, his name is Rick Wiles. Now, his website is True News. That's T-R-U News. There's no E in there. That's truenews.com. I really want to honor Rick Wiles um, and also the Holy Spirit that's going to minister to you. Rick, welcome to End Time Talk Radio. Hey, Barry. Hey, you're too kind. Thank you for the very nice introduction. Well, thank you. Rick, you know, as I said, you know, people... I wanted people to really hear your heart and maybe take a minute or two and, and, and your background, and then we'll go in and see what the, whole, what the Lord is speaking to your heart. Yeah, okay. Um, Barry, I, I'm, I've, been, I've been a Christian since um, the late 70s. I, I was in my mid-20s when I got saved. And um, the Lord led me into a career in the media. Uh, you know, secular commercial media. I, I worked in radio stations and cable television companies, and and then um, the Lord let open up the door in nineteen uh, in the mid nineties. Uh, I I was hired as uh, the marketing manager for excuse me in the mid eighties. I was hired as a marketing manager for CBN in Virginia Beach, and this was when Pat Robertson had had launched the, what was then called the CBN Cable Network. It later became the Family Channel. Okay. And so I, I, I spent time in Virginia Beach. And then in the 90s, Paul Crouch hired me as director of marketing for TBN, Trinity Broadcasting Network. And I was located out of the uh, Irving, Texas office in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. And that's where things really changed in my life. Uh, I knew... I knew all my life from the time I got saved that there was a call in my life, and I knew it had to do with uh, Christian media. But I, I thought that God was calling me to work in the background, you know, to, to be a manager, being you know, somebody uh, off camera, out of the microphones, away from the microphones, and, and to be someone there supporting the development of Christian media. Sure. It was... Uh, during my time at TBN in the 90s, that God totally changed my, my life. I was, uh, I was very busy at TBN. I worked directly with uh, Paul Crouch, and, and I was flying all around the nation representing TBN to cable executives, uh, cable corporations, uh, the new, at that time, the new satellite distribution companies such as DirecTV and uh, Dish Network. They were brand new at that time. And so my job was to promote TV and make it bigger. I get it on more channels. And I was doing that uh, with great zeal and having a great time. And then one, in, in April of 1998, something happened. Uh, I, the Lord, well, I was sitting in my office one day in the afternoon. Uh, sometime, it was like the third week of April. I don't remember the exact day of 1998. Mm -hmm. And I felt this impression to go to the chapel. I felt very strong to go to the chapel and pray. And so I called the uh, receptionist, and I told her, I said, hold all my calls. I'm going to be gone for a few minutes. And I thought I was just going down the hallway to the chapel for a few minutes. But very when I got there, something happened. And that, that event changed my life. I, I didn't see God. I didn't... Um, you know, I didn't have an out-of-body experience. I didn't float around the room. Nothing mm -hmm. like that happened. But when I went into the room, th that chapel was saturated with the holiness of God, the presence of Almighty God. And I, 
I absolutely trembled. I mean, I shook because I was aware of my of my carnality. I, I was aware of my humanity. I was aware that I was a I was human flesh made yes. of dust, and I was in the presence of the Creator who had my heartbeat in His hand, and I trembled. And I, I'm, I'm not going to share all what happened, but I, I, I will tell you this: the Lord, the Lord showed me things that had creeped into my life that didn't please Him. Uh, places of the world that had taken root in my heart, in my life, in my mind, things that were not not pleasing to the Lord, and and so He brought me to a place of repentance. And I was uh, on my knees weeping and crying. And then something happened. Uh, I, I had a vision. And I, I had never had a vision before in my life. I don't have visions every day. But this was a, this was a real vision. It was like a movie screen in front of me. And I saw, I saw an American city on fire. I saw the buildings burning down. I saw the skyscrapers charred black. I saw refugees just staggering out of the city wow. in a state of shock like zombies. They were blackened with smoke and soot and they had blood and they just looked amazed that they were even alive. And, and I said, God, what am I seeing? What is this? And I didn't hear this audibly. I just heard this in my spirit. I heard him say, this is your country's future. Wow. If America does not repent, and I I ask the Lord for a scripture to confirm that what I was seeing was from Him, because I got to I got to compare everything to the Word of God. Yes. If it didn't line up the Word of God, I'm not accepting it. And so I said, I said, Father, you know what I'm going to ask you? You got to show me something in Your Word that that tells me this is real. Mm-hmm. And as with tears running down my air, eyes, Barry, I, I opened up my Bible, just flipped it open, and I looked down, and, and I was looking um, at Isaiah 24. And I, I'm not going to read the whole scripture. Your, your listeners can, can read it. But basically, it describes judgment upon a land. Yes. And the city was destroyed. There was no food, no water. There was great mourning and sorrow. And it said only a remnant was left. And that was my confirmation. And so I asked the Lord why he was showing these things to me. And what I heard was, he said, just as I brought your sins to your face in one moment, so too will I bring America's sins to her face in one moment. And he said, I'm calling you this day to tell your nation to repent. And, and I, uh, you know, like Moses, I tried to, I tried to get out of it. I said, Lord, you know, you're obviously you got the wrong person here. Do, do you remember the conversation we just had a few minutes ago about my sins, my failures, my faults? And what he said to me was, Rick, I did not call you because you're holy. I called you because you're a good repenter. Yes. When I convict you, you repent. Tell the people to do the same thing. Tell them to repent. And so, Barry, I left. I went back to my office that day. I never said a word to anyone. And when I went home, I never told my wife or my son or daughter, who were at that time both living at home. My son had was a freshman in college. And I, I never said a word. Yes. But the next day, Barry, my daughter, Carissa, who was... 22 years old at that time, she told me, she said, Dad, I, Jesus spoke to me last night in my sleep. And, and I said, oh, so you had a dream about the Lord? She said, no, it wasn't a dream. He spoke. And he said, daughter, beginning tonight, I will speak to you about the end times through dreams and visions. And she said, Dad, he gave me actually two dreams about the end times. And the one dream was that our family was standing together, we were huddled together, and we were surrounded by thousands of people, and they were rotating around us like on a giant carousel. But Carissa said all of them were skeletons. 
and she remembered their, um, you know, the skeleton face and and the eyes back in the socket, and oh, yeah. and she said they were going around and around, uh, like on a carousel, and she said they were reaching out these long bony arms and fingers, and they were crying out to me, if you knew this was going to happen, why didn't you tell us? Hmm. Wow. And my daughter looked at me, she said, Dad, I don't know what God is telling you to do, but you better do it. And so I told her about what had happened to me the day before. And to make a long story short, Barry, you know, I went to Paul Crouch, I told him these things. I, I was so, I, I mean, looking back, I mean, listen, I was so whacked out of it. I mean, I, I, I thought yeah. all this stuff was going to happen, you know, immediately. I, I, I was so sh shaken by this, this experience. And I, and then over the months, over the summer of, of, of 1998, the Lord expanded on that vision and he told me things that were coming. He told me, I heard the words Al-Qaeda, uh, Osama bin Laden, nuclear suitcase bombs, anthrax, poison food, poison water, terrorism, cyber attacks. This was 1998 and nobody talked about that kind of stuff in 98. And eventually, Barry, um, this was so strong in me that by by September of, of 98, I, I had to resign. And I went to Paul Krauss and I said, I, 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 can't, I can't stay here anymore. This is burning inside of me. God has called me to warn I have to leave. And I walked out the door and, and I'm, you know, I was outside in the parking lot of TBN in Irving, Texas. And I, I just walked out of the best job that I'd ever had. Wow. And, I, and I've never looked back Barry, I've never looked back, and the Lord has, he has sustained us, he has taken care of us, he has blessed us, and it was pretty lonely there in the early days of this ministry in 98, 99, 2000, but I'll tell you, 2001, on November 11, our phones rang all day long, people calling saying, Rick, it's happening, it's happening, isn't it? And I had to say, yes, it's happening. And on that day, Barry, on Tuesday, September 11, 2001, I knew the vision I had seen had started to happen. Wow. And I realized that day, the rest of it, it wasn't going to happen suddenly or quickly. It was going to happen gradually over time. And I've watched this whole thing unfold because in, in 98, the Lord told me, watch the derivatives. And I didn't even know what a derivative was, but I heard it clearly. Watch the derivatives. When the derivatives come apart, the global financial system will collapse. I've been telling people that since 1998. Yes. But here we are today, and now the derivative market is over $700 trillion. Oh, of insurance on debt and it's a giant ticking time bomb the Lord told me that North Korea would strike us suddenly take out an American city mm -hmm. uh, where this ends is if America doesn't repent let me tell you where, where this ends it ends with an armed invasion of the United States of America that's I, where this ends. I agree. I agree. You know, Rick, a lot of times, a lot of the shows that you do, there's such a heavy anointing on a lot of your shows. There are sometimes, I will listen to some of your shows four, five, six times because I'm just, you know, pulling it all in because there's just so much to it. Um, I, I've heard that from other people, uh, Barry, and uh, that's, that's, that's a... Uh, that's something that has been said to me a number of times. Often for me, I, I'm like, I, I almost feel like I have um, crushed my listeners. I'm like, oh, I had to deliver <laughs> such a, I had to deliver such a heavy message today. Yes. 
you know, and I know that it can be scary, but I, I believe that those who are willing to listen to God now, God's going to give them anointing to endure through all this, if yes, they're willing to listen. The sad part is we see a lot of people not listening. That's what saddens me. Barry, the, the hardest group for me to reach has been the pastors. Yes. They've had their fingers in their ears and their hands over their eyes. They, they, they're, they're just out to lunch. Uh, not all of them. There's a lot of good God-fearing men that are still preaching the word, but, but a, a lot of them are clueless about what is happening, and, and therefore their congregations are just marching towards a cliff. They're, they're not going to have any idea what's about to hit this country because the shepherds have not prepared them. I agree, and that's what's sad. Um, you know, that is the hardest part. I know that myself that um, to preach the end time message really is a, a message that gets shunned by many people. Oh, believe me. <laughs> and, and the message of repentance. You would think, you know, when I, when I left TBN, and, well, actually, when, when this message first was given to me, I, my first thought was, oh, God gave this vision to me and this message of repentance because Paul Crouch is too busy. And, um, you know, he wants me to take this message to Paul, and then Paul will go on TV and tell everybody to repent. Yes. And, and then I could go back to work, and I could, you know, go on with my life, mind my own business. Well, it didn't work out that way. I, you know, I, found, I found out that, you know, God was calling me to leave TVN and preach repentance. But, I, Barry, I, honestly, the first couple of years... I actually, I was so naive, I actually thought the churches would get behind me. Yeah, yeah. I, I honestly was that naive. I thought the pastors were going to pat me on the back and say, go, Rick, preach it. I know. They were the worst group to reach. And that, they were the hardest ones to, to, to get the message to. They can slam a door in your face harder than, than people in the world. I know, and... When my wife and I, we talk about stuff to certain people, it's almost like they're deer in headlights. They have no clue, and they're Christians. And um, I don't know, I've been doing this for five or six years, not so much the radio, but just looking at news. God got my attention five or six years ago on things, and you know, it, now it's building faster and faster. Um, but it, it, you know, it's a lonely walk at times. It really is. <laughs> it's not lonely at times. It's well, lonely all the time. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you, you know, if, I'll tell you this, Barry, there is, a, there is a remnant. There is a remnant in the land. There is a group of Christians that are wide awake. They're not. They're not drinking the Kool Aid. They don't believe what they hear on Fox News and CNN. They don't believe it. They're, they're thinking with their own brain. They're praying. They're, they're hearing from the Lord, and they're staying awake. And, and for those Christians, they're going to get through these. These difficult times. Yes, um, we left the church, and I'm not the church building, not the church itself. Right. Four years ago, we went into a home groups mm -hmm. um, through dreams. God gave me three specific dreams to leave, and so we left. Um, and you know, God was confirmation, and you know, He said, you know, you will be, on, and it's not just me, but the others in remnant, you'll be on the pioneer side of the church. And well, I believe that. I believe that the, the whole religious structure in America is going to collapse. You know, one of the things I had seen, and I'll share this real quick. I had walked into a church, and I had seen um, a big old praise and worship up in the front going on, and the people were all in the pews, and they were just all sitting there. And I noticed that they kept on getting more sleep and more sleep as all the action was going on. But I realized that I had seen these snakes on the floor, and they were like Egyptian asp. And they were biting the people, and as they bit the people, they became more and more asleep. But then I noticed, as the, the I focused up on stage, there was five candles up on the front. And they're all doing their praise and worship like a Hollywood production. And I noticed that four of the candles were already burned out. The fifth one was almost out. And I said, God, what does this mean? And I believe that he told me, he says, my grace for the church this age is is, is running low it running you know it's, it's getting the way the church has been doing things mm -hmm. and you know it's a scary thing to see those things when other people can't well Barry the, the exciting thing is that I believe we're going to see a book of Acts part two 
Yes. For, for the Christians that really love the Lord and have their their hearts set on New Jerusalem and are waiting eagerly for the return of the Lord, uh, they're they're going to experience miracles that are even beyond what happened in the book of Acts. Jesus said that his disciples would do even greater things than he did. That's right. I believe that. I can't even comprehend that. No, I can't either. I mean, we could see things happen where God gives us the food we need because our preparedness had ran out or whatever. We Because I believe that preparing for food, it's not just for ourselves, but it's for those who we can help. That's right. And let me tell you, hey, I'll, on this the topic of preparation. Yes. And this, this comes up often in emails and, and letters to me because people misunderstand things that I'm saying about preparation. Yes, you should prepare. Yes, you should store. Okay. What is important is the attitude of the heart. Yes. Why are you storing? Is it for you and you only? Or is it for you to be a blessing to the people God sends to you to minister to them? Yes, I agree. All right. If you have the right attitude in the heart, God will God will give you so much to store. All right. But let me tell you, if, if you're storing up just for you to survive, it'll get worms and it will rot. Yeah. Okay, you're not going to get it. Now, the other thing he, he showed me about this, and I was praying this was about a year or so ago. I, I was getting a lot of people saying, Rick, I hear you. I believe what you're saying. I don't have any money to store anything. Mm. I'm just barely getting by. What, what do you say? What, what, what advice do you give me? Well, that those questions, you know, really tore me up. And I, I went to the Lord. And I said, Father, what do I say? What's the answer? And this is what He told me. He told me to tell the people that what is important is not the amount, the quantity that you have stored, but it's the fact that you have stored something. And here's why. He can't multiply nothing. Yes. Now, this this is connected to what I said earlier about giving away what you have stored to feed and care for others. If you have something stored up and you're willing to share, God will bless and multiply the portion that you give away. I do. If you have nothing stored... He has nothing to bless. Yes. It's... So don't worry about how much you're able to store. I mean, I know people that have just an unbelievable amount of stuff stored away. But And I also know other people that have just a little pantry, a little closet. That's all they can afford. Yeah. Let me tell you, if, you, if the Spirit of God is on you and in your heart and you're generous and you're willing to feed others... That little pantry will never go empty. Yeah. You know, I know that, you know, that God will provide for us. And that, you know, because with the being of the hearts, I believe that, you know, like you said, the remnant, the remnants are the ones that are hearing what God says. One of the things that God had told me years ago is that whatever I give to him, I still possess. And I believe that when we give all the stuff to him, trusting him, he will give back many fold. That's right. That's right. You know, and Rick, you know, because the Holy Spirit is so strong on you, you really are really do have a lot of wisdom to you know to give the people, um, and that's why I really encourage the listeners that listen to my show that they would really you know pick up and listen to you on a daily basis, um, because there's such wisdom and um, that comes from you and what the Holy Spirit's imparted into your life. Katrina 
made and uh, you, you, you just go on and on and on the, the, you know the, the list of judgments I mean now we have a communist Marxist in the White House and that hasn't aroused the church to pray yeah um, they want to do political action but they don't even want, but it's it's a spiritual problem Obama Obama is part of the judgment on the nation. The Bible says you will be ruled by foreigners, and he's a foreigner. Yes, he is. And so he is fulfilling biblical scripture. He is a foreigner who is ruling over us. It says that the Bible says that our our wealth will be given to foreigners. He's giving our wealth to foreigners. He is he's dismantling the country. He is. But that's part of the judgment, and no no amount of politics is going to stop it. It's going to take repentance first from the church. And the church doesn't think it needs to repent. I know. So there's the problem. I think we're at the point, Barry, that for the Christians whose hearts are humble and broken before the Lord, we are so far down the road of judgment at this point that there is no time to uh, persuade the body of Christ corporately in America to repent and cry out to God. I, I know that sounds pessimistic, but that's where I'm at after 14 years of this ministry. I, I now believe we've crossed the line. We are in the judgment. The judgment is intensifying, it's accelerating, and the church is becoming duller and duller of hearing and, and sight. The Bible says, God sends a delusion on the people because they choose to believe a lie. And that, that applies to the church also. And they have chosen to believe lies. They believe the lies of the politicians. They believe the lies of the government. They believe the lies of the news media. Mm -hmm. They believe the lies of the establishment. They have chosen to believe lies. Therefore, a delusion is coming on them. And when the delusion is sent on you from God, you can't get out of it. You can't see. Because that delusion was sent by God. And it's a judgment on the people. Because mm. they wanted to believe lies. And, and so we're at that stage right now. I don't think we're going to wake them up. I really don't. We're not going to wake up the church. We're not going to wake up the religious in this country. The only thing that's going to wake them up is going to be utter calamity. That's it. That's all. At this point, nothing else will work. So what I'm saying to people right now, Barry, is get your heart right with God. Get your affairs in order. Get your life in line with the Word of God. At this point, you're not going to wake up your brother-in-law. You're not going to. You're not going to convince your neighbor. You're not going to convince the guy at work that these things are happening. It's too late. Get your own affairs in order. Make sure there's no sin in your life. Make sure there's no bitterness, no unforgiveness. Make sure that your life is right. What if your life came to an end tomorrow morning because of a calamity in this country? Are you prepared to go? I mean, very, on, on on the morning of 9/11. 3,000 Americans went to work at the World Trade Centers, and they thought it was just going to be a normal day. Yes. If you had told them the day before, get your affairs in order, make sure everything's right, today's the last day you'll live, they, they would not have believed you. If you would have gotten 3,000 employees together in the World Trade Center and said, you 3,000 will die in the morning, they would not have believed you. No, they wouldn't have. And so what I'm saying to Christians is right now is, you get your affairs in order, because we don't know what's going to happen. Uh, North Korea could do something crazy. They're getting ready to launch a rocket that's capable of hitting the USA. Hmm. Fukushima is still boiling away. The news media will not tell you about it. But the Japanese government has emergency plans to evacuate Tokyo. And where do they put them? You know, where do they put well, them? Let me tell you, Barry, Japan is over as a nation. It's finished. Yes. The whole country's finished. They will, they, will, they will emigrate the entire Japanese population to other countries. Well, you know, we had... Fukushima blows up. And one reactor...
reactor has 460 tons of nuclear fuel that will go up into the atmosphere and be carried by the by the Gulf Stream, which will it, it swoops right over Japan, and then it goes up. Uh, the jet stream goes up. I said the Gulf Stream goes to the, the, uh, the jet stream. The jet stream goes over Japan, goes up to Alaska, comes down the coast of the of Canada, the USA, shoots across the continental United States, comes down around Florida, goes out over the Bahamas into the into the Atlantic, and goes around again. That's where the radiation is going to go. Right across my house. <laughs> yeah. 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 And, and listen, the food supply of this country could be ended overnight. Wow. That's... You know, the, this, I just thought about this. This is one of the things the Lord told me in 1998. He said, the, he told me that there would be a famine in America. And I said, how could, how could America have a famine? And he said, the, the cupboards will be full, but no one will dare to eat it because it is poisoned. And for years, in fact, up until now, I believe that he was telling me that there would be uh, agro-terrorism, where terrorists would poison the food supply. I'm now starting to think, Barry, that it is Fukushima. Yes. I could see that happening. What are you going to do if, 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 if you're looking at the food and you go, if that has one radioactive isotope on it I'm dead well well I know you had a news story I'm looking at that the polar bears in Alaska they're actually having uh, skin lesions found on, on the polar bears up there is that radiation right. they got skin lesions and their fur is falling off and what, and what about <laughs> and, all the... and down in Peru yeah 6,000 dead dolphins washing up on the shores what's killing them I think it's Fukushima we had some friends that went to Japan to do a missionary trip. They got the minister, and, and they really moved in the prophetic. And they said, you know, it was amazing how many Japanese people were not Christians. There were a few people that were very hungry, and there was, you know, prostitutes and that getting saved. But the majority of the country just does not want God there. I mean, all, all that stuff they have, the, the different gods they have. Yeah, very sad. It is. They have many false gods, many idols. Christian population is very small in Japan. There is a church in Japan. Rick, I really do want to honor your time, and so I know that you're limited on your time. Um, may I have you do a salvation call? That's what we always push for, is that, you know, I never know who it might touch. Who, uh, you know, in the way that you would want people to receive Jesus Christ, Lord and Savior. Absolutely. What I want people to know is uh, we are living in perilous times. We are living in very, very dangerous times. We're, we're racing into the last days. Personally, I, I personally believe that we've got quite some time until Jesus Christ returns because there are certain prophecies that have to be fulfilled. But listen to me on this. That does not mean the United States of America will continue to operate and exist in its present form. Just because the USA goes out of business. Doesn't mean the world comes to an end and Jesus Christ comes back. Nations have risen and fallen for thousands of years. The history books are full of nations that once existed, once ruled the, the world, but they don't exist anymore. They were destroyed. And they were destroyed because they worshipped idols yes. because they became pagan, because they, they became an abomination to the living God of Israel. And the United States of America, in its early days, despite its faults, this nation had a population that loved God. And I believe that 50 years ago, the average sinner in America had more fear of God than the average Christian has today. That's how far we have fallen. Wow. We become a totally pagan nation. We export wickedness. Wickedness is our chief export to the world. We send out more pornography. We send out more decadence. We send out filthy vile movies. We corrupt the minds of tens of millions of children.
children around the world. That's, that's the truth. That's what we're doing as a nation. We bomb nation after nation. We, we bring destruction to many nations, and we boast about it. We sit and watch it on TV. We like to watch our wars while watching CNN and Fox. And we don't have any idea that this stuff's going to come back on us. We used to be a nation that loved God and feared God. But not anymore. We've allowed the God-haters to take God out of this nation. And you might be saying, but I didn't do it. I wasn't for it. Yeah, but you sat there and you allowed them to do it. Hmm. The Christians cared so little about Jesus Christ that they never raised their hand or their voice to stop it. And now, here we are in 2012, and the nation is on a fast track to destruction. And so what I'm saying to you right now is you need to understand that we are, we are on a collision course with the judgment of God. And I don't believe we will finish 2012 without great calamity and woe in this nation. Hmm. You're going to have to get through it. You're going to have to live here. Unless God speaks to you and tells you to go, you're going to be here for it. And you, you're going to need the supernatural power of God to get through these things. And so, if you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, because the things that are coming, your life could end at any moment. Your life could end. Listen, I don't know if Barry has told you, but just last week we learned that the Department of Homeland Security has ordered 450 million rounds of hollow point bullets. 450 million rounds. That's enough for war. Yes. That's Homeland Security. Just who do they plan to shoot? Hollow point bullets blow people's heads off, blows their chest off. This is what our government is preparing for. Why? Because they know the whole stinking system is coming down. It's rotted out from the core. It's rotted out from the center because we have disowned Jesus Christ. And now we have to pay for it. The only thing that will stop it is mass repentance in the land. A crying out of the people saying, oh God, forgive us for what we've done. Have mercy on us. Forgive us. That's the only thing that's going to stop it. But what each one of us have to do, we have to make sure that our own personal life is in line with God's will, His plan. And that we, that our sins have been washed away by the precious blood of Jesus Christ, that our names are written in the Lamb's book of life. That's all you and I can do. I can't do anything about the rest of the country. I can't do anything about my neighbor. All I can do is try to tell them the truth and point them in the right direction. But right now, what you can do is make sure your life is right with God. And if you're a parent, you got to get your life right with God before the rest of your family will follow and be saved. And so, here's what I want you to do. I want you to, I want you to believe on the name of Jesus Christ. I want you to ask God to forgive you of your sins. We've all broken the commandments of God. Every single one of us deserves eternal damnation. We deserve it. But because of the goodness of God, because he loves us, he made a way for the human race to escape eternal damnation and hell. He sent his son Jesus Christ to this earth 2,000 years ago. Jesus Christ, who existed from, from the beginning, and became an embryo in, in the womb of a young human woman named Mary. And her name is blessed. And I honor her, Mary, the mother of Jesus. Because she was chosen by Almighty God to bear his child. But when Jesus left the city of heaven, he, he was the son of God. He was the king. And in a split second, he became a human embryo. 
embryo inside a woman's womb on earth. And she gave birth to this child, Jesus Christ. And as he grew up and he preached the gospel of the kingdom, but the human race did not want to hear it. And so they murdered him. They nailed him to a cross. But praise be to God, he didn't stay dead. He came out of that grave. His body was resurrected. It wasn't a spirit that came out. It was his human flesh that came out of the grave. He is the first person to overcome the grave, to overcome death. And because he overcame death, we can overcome death by believing on his name. That's what it means to be born again. And Jesus said, if you are not born again, you will not see the kingdom of God. Because when you and I are born into this world as infants, we are our spirits are dead. We we are spiritually we are still born because our spirits enter into this world dead, dead because of sin, the sin of our forefathers, going all the way back to Adam and Eve. That's what happened to Adam and Eve when they sinned; their spirits died. Their flesh didn't die, their spirits died. And every human being has been born into this world with a dead spirit. But because Jesus Christ overcame death and was raised from the dead, because he is now seated at the right hand of God the Father, when we believe on his name and we say, I believe, I believe Jesus is the Savior. I believe it, I see it, I understand it now. He is the Savior. And if I believe on his name, his spirit will come into me, and my spirit, which is dead, will come to life again. And that is what being born again is all about. Your spirit is dead. It must come alive. If you, if your spirit, if you go to the grave and your spirit is still dead, you will spend eternity in hell. The way to escape it is for your spirit to be born again. And the only way your spirit can be born again is to believe on the name of Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. To confess to God that you're a sinner who needs salvation and that you believe that his son was sent to you to save you. And when you do that, he comes into your heart. He comes into your spirit. He quickens you to come alive spiritually and you're born again and at that very moment your name is written in God's book of life and nothing is going to take you out of his hand you can rest you can know that you are saved and that's what I want you to do right now if I believe there are people right now and something is happening inside your spirit you're like what is this and that's the Holy Spirit that is the Holy Spirit right now convicting you, calling you, wooing you. And please don't shun what is happening. Don't, don't shut this off. Listen, you can only be saved when God calls you to be saved. You can't say, I'll get saved when I want to. It doesn't work that way. You can only get saved when God calls you. And if he stops calling you, you can't get saved. And he does stop calling human beings. There is a point in time where God says, I'm not going to call that man or woman's name anymore. They do not want me. And when that happens, and only God knows when he shuts it off, but when that happens, that person can't get saved ever. Mm -hmm. And they are lost because they, they rejected the love of God repeatedly. Over and over and over and over, they re- they rejected God. So don't you do that. Don't make that mistake. Your Heavenly Father loves you. He's, he, he desires to save you. What he's trying to do is, is to bring you back into his family so that when you pass away, you will spend eternity with him. So let's pray. Hmm. Heavenly Father... And I just, whoever you are, you just pray.
pray this with me. You just pray this with me. Heavenly Father, I confess I am a sinner. I have broken your commandments. I was born in sin. I deserve punishment. But Father, I have heard the gospel that you sent your son Jesus Christ to save me. And I receive that salvation. And I believe on the name of Jesus Christ as the Savior of the world. And I believe that he is my Savior. And I am asking him to come into my heart and bring my spirit to life that I would be born again. I'm asking you to write my name in the book of life and preserve me for eternity. And I'm asking this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Now listen, here, this is the next thing that you need to do. The Bible says you need to confess with your mouth that Jesus is your Lord. So you find somebody and you tell them, i got to tell you something. I got born again. I was born again. I have believed on the name of Jesus. My sins are forgiven. You need to say that verbally. Next thing you need to do is get baptized in water in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And then you need to get into the Word of God. And you need to begin reading the Word and letting the Word get inside you. And pray that the Lord will guide you to a church where you'll find a a pastor, a shepherd, who will shepherd you and, and bring you into the knowledge of God. But when you do these things, you can rest. You can rest and know that your spirit is saved. And no matter what happens in this world, you're in the hand of God. And whether you live or die physically, your spirit will live forever. And you will not perish in the lake of fire. And that is a great, great peace to have. Barry, thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate you inviting me on your program today. Thank you, Rick. I do appreciate it. Thank you so much. It's Rick Wiles over at True News. That's T-R-U News.com. There's no E in True News.com. Rick Wiles, uh, one that we listen to every single morning. My wife and I have done that for at least two years, uh, Monday through Friday. You can catch him on truenews.com, also on Blog Talk Radio. He does a daily one-hour show uh, on current events, news, and also has special guests on. I encourage you to listen to him, uh, and also uh, we also support Rick Wiles over at True News. And so I also recommend that you know, if you feel led to, to give seed somewhere, I believe that True News is good soil to give into.